from Kitty Hawk to Cape Kennedy. NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration presents Aeronautics and Space Report. The moon is a necessary first step for exploration of the planets. To fly men there and return them safely in this decade is the goal of NASA's Project Apollo. The early missions of Mercury and the experience from Gemini have brought this country to the next major milestone, the first Apollo three-man space flight. These are the men to fly that mission. Command pilot Virgil Grissom, Mercury, Gemini, and now Apollo, his third time into space, one of the original seven astronauts. The senior pilot, Edward White. He will be remembered for his spacewalk during Gemini 4. White has been specializing in the computers and training for the upcoming mission. Astronaut Roger Chaffee will man the third Apollo seat. He has been concentrating on the flight plan and experiments. The most important part of the assignment will be to flight test the spacecraft and check out all its systems, tests which will prove its spaceworthiness for future flights. The Saturn rocket, the Apollo spacecraft, and all the component parts have been tested and retested. Everything is nearly ready, including the crew, for this country's first three-man space flight. What you are seeing here are attempts at creating weightlessness or partial weightlessness, a necessary study for the men and machines traveling into the weightless vacuum of space. All of these devices are attempts to overcome the pull of the Earth's gravity, just about the only space experience that can't be duplicated or controlled for long periods of time. This rather ordinary looking building houses the newest and most sophisticated equipment for the study of weightlessness. It is called the Zero-G facility and is located at NASA's Lewis Research Center in Cleveland. The basic structure consists of a steel vacuum chamber extending 510 feet below the ground. Experiments can be hurled up from the bottom of the chamber and then fall back into millions of pieces of foam-like cushioning material, achieving about 10 seconds of weightlessness. Experiments can also be dropped from the top of the shaft, allowing five seconds of weightless test time. This demonstration model shows the space available for a variety of experiments. The new facility will be extremely useful in testing various liquid fuels at zero G. Motion pictures taken during drops will give space engineers new insights into the behavior of liquids while weightless. The zero G facility, a new tool for space research. This represents one of six biosatellites. With them, NASA hopes to answer some very basic biological questions. Will a cell divide normally while weightless? How does zero G affect plant growth? Will a combination of radiation and weightlessness be a hazard on long duration manned space flights? Small biosatellite capsules like this are expected to bring back the answers to these and many other questions. The first flight, carrying 13 experiments, will remain in orbit three days. Others will fly from 21 to 30 days. Flights that will attempt to find out if the rhythmic cycles of sleeping and waking are associated with the Earth's rotation. To see what happens to blood circulation during weightlessness. And to study brain activity in the space environment. From cells and developing eggs, on up through plants and primates. With biosatellite, biologists will have a unique opportunity to study forces influencing nearly every form of life. This has been an Aeronautics and Space Report, presented by NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. From Kitty Hawk, to Cape Kennedy. NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration presents Aeronautics and Space Report. Applications Technology Satellite, ATS. That's the name given to this spider-shaped spacecraft. 
one of the most versatile ever developed. Its purpose, test out experimental systems for improving weather forecasts, radio, television, and communications of all kinds. Mounted atop the reliable Atlas Agena rocket, the 790-pound satellite was boosted into a stationary orbit, hovering in place some 22,300 miles out from Earth. These pictures, taken between 7.05 a.m. and 10.05 p.m., show the changing cloud pattern over the world for an entire day, giving weathermen their first continuous view of developing storms. Up till now, airplanes flying over mid-ocean have been out of radio range for periods of an hour or more. With ATS technology, airlines may be able to keep in touch at all times. Recently, at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center, this new system of communicating with aircraft was demonstrated in a series of tests with the press attending. One of the tests was with an airplane flying just southwest of San Francisco. The communication traveled some 50,000 miles from Goddard to the Mojave ground station near Barstow, California, to the satellite, and finally to the airplane. Live. Go ahead to United 2621. Goddard, clear. Uh, Roger, Goddard, Test Control. This is United Airlines Flight 2621. Captain Collins speaking. I want to see that uh, your transmissions are coming in loud and clear. Uh, Pan American Flight 6004. This flight is about three hours and a half east of Tokyo. Pan American Clipper 6004. This is Goddard Test Control. Go ahead. Uh, Goddard Control. This is the Clipper 6004. How do you ATS can also relay color TV. In another demonstration, color television was relayed from the Mojave facility by satellite to Rosman, North Carolina, and then by conventional means to Goddard. We have enlarged our, the picture we received from the spacecraft, and we have our weather girl with that enlargement. Serving as a telephone switchboard, ATS can handle 600 two-way or 1,200 one-way calls between stations far away from each other. Places like Japan, Australia, and the United States will try to communicate through the satellite. Applications Technology Satellite. During the spacecraft's three-year lifetime, it will test out new communications concepts, making it truly a switchboard in the sky. This is test pilot Bruce Peterson at NASA's Flight Research Center, following the first successful flight of the so-called HL-10 lifting body. Lifting bodies may be the forerunners of future spacecraft able to touch down on land. The HL-10 is one of two research lifting bodies to be flown. Tucked under the wing of a huge jet, the small craft is air-launched from an altitude of 45,000 feet. And there's the drop. The wingless lifting body achieves the aerodynamic lift it needs to make it fly from its very shape, eliminating the necessity for wings. Right now, lifting bodies drift down to land much as a glider does. Within the next few months, both research vehicles will begin powered flights. By adding rocket engines, the craft can be flown at altitudes up to 80,000 feet and at speeds of 1,000 miles per hour. Conditions spacecraft now encounter returning to Earth. This has been an Aeronautics and Space Report, presented by NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. <laughs>